peace, peace, peace. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> I'm going to take you out of your mind frame. I'm going to take you out of your main frame today. Out of your brain, hopefully. <sighs> so be something that you like. Something that you enjoy. Oh, peace to the gods, the gods, the gods, the gods. And yes, peace to the goddesses. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? Would you be so divine? Thank you guys for hanging out with the wonderful priest king, your humble servant. I'm here today to bring you some more information. Hopefully this helps. Do not forget to hit the dislike button on your way in, you know, make sure you unshare, and if you are a, a black Hebrew Israelite, yes, continue to flag my my page, you're doing such a wonderful job, you know, you guys do such a wonderful job at nothing, it's so fantastic, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, but yes, um, today we're going to talk, I'm going to start you off by kind of blowing your mind right quick, you're going to start off with a mind blow. Then we're going to get into this work. So, yes. Uh, thank you for hitting the dislike button. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Don't forget. All right. Let's get into some information today, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about Abraham Lincoln. You see, Abraham Lincoln is possibly a crypto Jew. Why would a person say such a thing? Well, let's do some history. What we're going to do today is we're going to find out what happened. What did Abraham Lincoln do? Who is Abraham Lincoln? Who is this? We're going to find all that out very quickly. So let's get into this work. We're going to start off here with some information that you guys have never heard. All right. And it all took place on. Let's get the screen going. Go, bow. We're going to talk about General Order Number Eleven, issued by. What the hell? Why are they, why are they playing this game? Is my screen backwards? <laughs> what the hell? They don't. They playing. How is my screen upside down and backwards? That's dope. What the fuck? What the hell is going on? Hold on. Hold on. Have you ever seen that before? It's my upside down. Stop it. Hold on. Or is that just how it looks to me? Come on. We won't get into it. Don't worry. Oh, no. Okay. All right. It's not upside down and backwards then. All right. I had to check because it looked upside down and backwards to me. They're playing a game with me today. Like, they had a real good thing going. That's why I'm late. They've been playing a really good game with me today. But we're going to get into this information. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got it. Let's start again. Starting again. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen. Boom. This shirt is backwards and reverse, but we're going to look at it. All right. I'm sad. <laughs> Boom. It was a controversy order issued by Union Major General Ulysses S. Grant on December 17th, 1862. During the campaign that took place uh, during the American Civil War. The order damn I can't even it's crazy. The order that's a damn thing. <laughs> the order <laughs> 
expelled all the Jews in Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky. This is crazy. So we never heard that there was an order expelling all the Jews from Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky. What the fuck are they doing this shit, bro? This is something that we never heard. I'm sorry, y'all. They got my screen crazy. But we're going to get into it. They don't want y'all to know this truth. Somebody made an order. Look at this. Somebody made an order expelling all the Jews. You see that? In the middle of the Civil War, 1862. Somebody made an order for that. So let's talk about who made that order. Bro, this is going to be a little difficult because they got me backwards. But like you say, we got all power. So who did that order? General Grant. Let's start. Let's find out something about General Grant here. This thing is crazy. Oh my God. Dog, oh, I can't do this. They got me backwards. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. I don't even have a screen. <clears throat> I can't even see nothing. My screen is black right now. Look at this shit. Yeah, this is crazy. I don't even have a screen. <clears throat> I can't even see nothing. My screen is black right now. They are bugged out over here, bro. They are bugged out. This is the resistance. We ain't playing with these niggas. This is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. I don't even have a screen. This is crazy. Right, let's try this one. I might have to hold this drink upside down. Like, it's still upside down. Damn, how they make my whole shit upside down? <laughs> I mean, this is some Hebrew magic? Y'all got that Hebrew magic. I like it. This is crazy. Damn, this is crazy. That is crazy, man. You gotta understand, like, how are y'all looking at me? That shit is fucked up. All right, I'm gonna try to hold this thing sideways. So let's see, if we can get this information sideways. So this way I can get the whole screen. Come on. At least it don't look crazy on the joint. Shout out to everybody trying with me over here. Make sure y'all hit the dislike button when you come in. <laughs> you know what I mean? The algorithm is going crazy. So, yes. General Grant. This shit upside down like a one. General Grant. Boom. This one have to work. Zoom in. 
All right, so look, this is what happened. General Grant, he got General Orders number 11, right? And he called, in those orders, he looked at Jews as a class. But how many of y'all ever knew that General Grant kicked out all the Jews from the town? We ever knew that he kicked them out from the South? Y'all want to say, you know, that Hebrews been here the whole time. Okay. So let's get into this order. What is the order? Let's get into this order. You're going to skip all of that and get right up, oh, brother. Stop it. Get right into the order. So. Tense, tense as conditions were in Paducah, nothing, all right, set the scene. So General Grant is the, is the, um, is the general that runs Mississippi, Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, and, um, he's in charge of all of that. So when he kicks out the Jews from, he kicks them out from the South, from the, from the cotton growing country, from the agriculture, from the farming, they can't do no smuggling. They can't do none of that. So, boom, let's start here. Let's start here. Pursuing his happiness. Pursuing his happiness, in his words, as a peaceable, law-abiding citizen, he was suddenly summoned on Sunday. He was suddenly summoned on Sunday to report immediately to Paducah's provost marshal. Captain L.J. Waddle. There he was handed the following banishing, the, final, the following order banishing him from the city. Here's the order right here. Wow. See? Paducah. Oh, <laughs> Paducah, Kentucky, right? It says to C.J. Caskell, sir, in pursuance of general order number 11 issued from General Grant's headquarters, you are hereby ordered to leave the city of Paducah, Kentucky, within 24 hours after receiving this order. You see? This is the order. Jews got to go, right? That's, so, so why did that happen, though? Why did that happen? Huh? Why did that happen? Let's find out what happened around the world now, right? Because once you do something like that, it's going to be newspaper articles, right? So here's a newspaper article right here. It says General Grant General Grant's orders Expelling the Jews from Paducah, right? So why have we never heard about this in history? If they in America expelling Jews in the middle of the war, why are they not talking about this in history? Now, y'all got to understand the date of this whole thing. What's the date? Again, the date is December 17th. Right? The date is December 17th, 1862. What else happened? What happens next? Well, what did Lincoln do? And this is how you got to understand how they play with history. Because that happened in December. So now, before December, you got to have President Lincoln. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, my bad. Hold on. Damn, what happened to that? President Lincoln issues his Emancipation Proclamation. Okay? So, hold on. Damn, give me one second. We want to go back to... Uh... 
Emancipation Proclamation. What was the date of the Emancipation Proclamation, right? So the Emancipation Proclamation was issued. Gosh. They kill it. January 1st, right? January 1st, less than a month after the export the expulsion of the Jews. So now why is this oh, damn, this is killing me? Don't worry. So why is this even an important thing, right? Let's figure out what is emancipation. Because we are, we're told that emancipation is, you know, where he saved the, the, you know, freed the slaves. So we've been dealing with Judaism for the last couple of weeks, right? So now we're on the virtual Jewish library and we're dealing with emancipation. See, let's find out what emancipation is. Emancipation of Jews in modern times. I know it's going to be backwards. I think it is what it is. Damn, maybe playing with my camera, boy. Look at that. Emancipation of Jews in modern times. Okay. Stands alongside such other emancipatory movements as those of the serfs, women, slaves in the United States, and Catholics. But what is emancipation of Jews? What is it? Let's go down a little bit. Pardon me, this camera. Right here. Two. Ideology. Ugh. Ideologically, emancipation stem from the utopian bro, it crazy. stem from the utopian political and social thought since the 18th century, which is the 1700s. Okay, there are three. The first period, the first period. The three periods in the history of Jewish emancipation. The first period, heralding emancipation, covered the 50 years preceding the French Revolution, 1740 to 89. The second period, the 90 years from the French Revolution until the Congress of Berlin, 1789 to 1878. Comprised emancipation in Western and Central Europe. You see, so there is a movement going on in Europe called emancipation. You don't believe me? Let's get into it. All you have to do is simply look for Jewish emancipation. Excuse me. So the Jewish emancipation movement, right? The Jewish, this is Wikipedia. Shit. The Jewish Emancipation Movement was the process in various nations in Europe of eliminating Jews' disabilities to which Europeans were subject and then recognition of Jews was initiated to equality and citizenship. So do you understand? I just, like, so when you're expelling Jews from America, from the South, they need to be emancipated. Do you understand that? How do you take over the act of what General Grant did by emancipating the Jews? So this process of emancipation, right, that's been going on since Napoleon, here again in this Napoleon, emancipating the Jews, as you can see, they got the menorah, and this is 1806. With Napoleon, right? So, just to come up, just to come up a little background on it, you don't even want to do the background. 
we already just told y'all the early stages of the movement, how long they've been doing it, yada, yada, yada. But let's see the process, because here are the states in the countries where they have, where the process of equality and emancipation has been granted. You get it. This is the dates of emancipation. Okay? 16, Poland, France. Latvian Republic, the Grand Duchy of, of Hesse, Westphalia, right? I've been to Westphalia before. Grand Duchy of Frankfurt, Mecklenburg Schwerin, 1812, Prussia, 1812, right? Kingdom of Bratvia, 1812. All of these good states, all of these good countries, and then we come up to 1865, we get to Mexico. So, they have an emancipation all around the world, right? They got it in Italy, 1861. Denmark, 1849. They're turning up. But they never had emancipation in America, which you're trying to tell me. They skipped America and went to Mexico in 1865. Okay. Maybe Abraham Lincoln was interested in this Jewish cause more than we knew. Let's get into this other book. It's called, the book is called, We Called Him Rabbi. Okay, so we want to get the Jewish perspective of, is Abraham Lincoln possibly a crypto Jew? Huh? And it's a good book, right? Because it also talks about um the Lincoln in the revulsion of orders number eleven, right? See European see see Jewish people know this all the time. They know what happened, the expulsion, you know, and they also know about Lincoln and the movement to Christianize the Constitution. Y'all see that? Yeah. Lincoln in the movement to Christianize the Constitution. That's what got him murked. But before we get into this wonderful book, let's just play a game right quick. Because y'all have like, Priest King, you be making stuff up. You right. I do. But I just want to know, where are all the presidents, right? Can we just find all the presidents right quick? Let's just be silly. Somebody be silly. Somebody go all the president's name. Oh, we got to see their face too, huh? We got to see their face too, huh? We don't want to see their face. It's going to take forever. We just want their names. Here go their names. Damn, fuck me to stop it. All right, my bad. So we got George, we got Thomas, I'm sorry, we got George, we got John, we got Thomas, we got James. Now, mind you, all of these names are good Christian names, Second Testament, I mean, New Testament names, John from the New Testament, Thomas, New Testament, that's Catholic stuff, New Testament names, good, decent, James, New Testament names, right? Andrew, Andrew's a New Testament name. All of these presidents got New Testament names. James, you know, James, no one except for Abraham has this name of a first, of an old scripture person. You have to understand, like if you're, if you're an Irish person, you got a good Irish name. It's like Pat. It's like Patricia, right? Patricia and Patrick. Those are those good Irish names, right? Your, your name is Michael. Your name is, um, you know, Mark. Those are good Christian names because that's, you know, Second Testament. So a good Hebrew name is Abraham, Isaac, right? <laughs> Shalomon. You see, this is a good Hebrew name. You don't have to take my word for it. 
Let's see what the Hebrews think of Abraham. Father Abraham. Okay. Uh huh. Let's go. Let's get into it. Where we at? Okay. Do do do. Start the page. We call him Rabbi. Here we are. Daddy. Daddy. Y'all call him Daddy, huh? Daddy Abraham. <laughs> okay. We're going to skip a little bit. So they, they're talking about after he died, right? So when he died on the date, they says, um, on Wednesday, April 19th, 1865, Louis Natilia Demitz a prominent lawyer, Jewish communal leader, and longtime activist in the Republican Party, ascended the pulpit of Beth Israel Synagogue in Green Street in Louisville, Kentucky, to participate in the congregation in the congregations to participate in the congregations obsequies for Abraham Lincoln. He began his lament with these remarkable words, you often called him jocosely Rabbi Abraham, if he, as if he were one of our nation, of the seed of Israel. But in truth, you might have called him Abraham, the child of our father Abraham. For indeed, all of the Israelites throughout the United States for indeed, of all the Israelites throughout the United States, there was none who more thoroughly filled the idea of what a true descendant, of what a true descendant of Abraham ought to be than Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Let's keep going here. She got she has a very good uh situation going. <laughs> we want to get into it. So, um, let's go right here. Starting from <laughs> during, I'm sure we're on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. During the 1850s, Lincoln patronized Jewish businesses worked shoulder to shoulder with Jews who were actively involved in local politics and made friends with a noteworthy number of Jews while he traveled across Illinois, a judicial circuit. In addition, a considerable number of a considerable number of Jews of Jews consider Lincoln to be a personal friend or at the very least a personal acquaintance. Jews had had political associations with Lincoln for years, and some took part in helping Lincoln to secure his party's nomination in 1860. Actually, it was a Jew that convinced Lincoln to run, but we'll get into that later. After he was chosen to head the Republican ticket, numerous American Jews participated enthusiastically in his election campaign. In short, among Lincoln's many friends, there was a band of Jewish loyalists. We don't want to be lying. We don't want to be lying here. Amongst his friends was a band of Jewish loyalists. You yeah, see that? A band of Jewish loyalists. Bob, let's keep it going. Interestingly, interestingly, had Abraham Lincoln been running for president in 1840 instead of 1860, this relationship might have never been possible. This is because, demographically speaking, American Jewry had become a, per a perceptible and communal presence at the very time that Lincoln's presidential and political career was unfolding. Now let's get into some... Um, let's get into some some uh some who got you right quick if y'all don't mind we wanna uh 
We're going to let them talk a little bit. Give me one second while I pull this up. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope, I hope, you know, they got me going. They got me backwards in reverse. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. But, uh, hey, man, I like it. So let's pull up this, and we're going to let them talk about it right quick. Because, see, that's why I wanted to start y'all off in a place that we never been. We never knew that this a thing where they were expelling people from America. You know what I'm saying? And that the emancipation is designed to stop people from being expelled and to allow them to move freely. It's not necessarily about, um, you know, anything other than what it is about being free to move around, right? So, um, let's go. You know, I got to give you all the work that nobody ever gives you. Nobody ever knows how far I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. We're going to uncover the whole truth. We want to get to the bottom of the whole truth. Don't worry. But you, you know, I get it. Everybody don't want to know. We want to know. I want to know. People living in lie. You know, we want to talk about Abraham. I'm just trying. I, I want them to. I want to. I want to play something. Now, y'all know I don't usually do a lot of video, but um, I gotta play some video today because um, Because it's, it's so, it's different when you hear Jewish people talk about Abraham Lincoln. Like I say, black people think we like Abraham Lincoln. We don't know nothing about Abraham Lincoln. But Jewish people have a different, oh, they must have. Oh, goodness. Here we go, one more time. Jewish people have a totally different um, love and understanding for Abraham Lincoln. They don't even want to, like, I'm telling you, I'm, I think they're blocking my page right now. I can't even find nothing on my page. This is retarded. These things are really good. They're really good. It too looks like they picked up the construction on 55 southbound, the, right after 47 in the Deckard area. So things are definitely... Okay. Sound. How do you use the sound? Mm. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, guys. I guess this will be. This is. This will have to be. Like this is crazy. This is crazy. This has to be the crazy. Like, they got everything backwards. I got a blank screen. And now I can't get no music. I can't get no audio. How does that work? Really, it's a, it's, it's a nightmare right now. <laughs> it's a nightmare right now, boy. They don't want y'all to know. But y'all already know, though. So it's really up to y'all to really kind of like, you know, whatever y'all want to do with that is what y'all want to do with that. I gave it all to you. 
Cause now you you understand you can understand. This is you can understand that it's a movement. Abolition, I mean, emancipation is a movement. Emancipation is a Jewish movement that started in Europe. They had no reason for emancipation until, right? So, damn, bro, they don't want us to win. Was a unit uh, that fought at Gettysburg under the command of a Jewish general. All right, here we go. So that's you won't have to do it the old fashioned way since they're hating on the gods. Another spending plan after Governor Shapiro said he would veto the school voucher program he crafted with Senate Republicans, a move that initially upset Democrats. Now Republicans are upset. That's all I had. It ain't trying to let this shit play. The devil is a lie, right? Y'all don't know that? That's a damn shame. These niggas, they do anything, boy. But again, I feel like I gave y'all the thing. I just wanted them to tell their side of the story so y'all could uh, hear it from the horse's mouth. But for some reason... It ain't going down like that. For some reason, it ain't going down. I mean, they got everything on my phone block. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. How these motherfuckers work together, huh? Okay, I see you, uh, Describing. There's a larger concept here. Uh, you talk uh, uh, in the book about Lincoln's sense of inclusion with Jews and that he saw them as insiders, not outsiders. Step back and talk about sort of where that philosophy, you mentioned the personal relationships with someone like Jonas, obviously very important. You mentioned his biblical um, uh, the fact that the first Jews he ever met were biblical characters who he deeply admired, obviously. But 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 talk about Lincoln's Jews as a people as well. Yeah, I my sense is that Lincoln um, looked at Jews and saw a connection in his mind to the persecuted slaves and blacks. Uh, to his mind, if we really believe in uh, freedom, uh, you know, all, all men are created equal, then that had real meaning. And um, uh, that's... You see how they keep... You see how he's saying that he thought Jews and Blacks... But we already know emancipation is a whole different concept. You see what I'm saying? So you can't have an Abraham Lincoln, who's the president of the United States, Knowing what's going on around the world that never heard of emancipation. Just like he said, he thought that it's a way to tie Jews with blacks in slavery. Do y'all understand that? I thought it was a, he thinks it's possibly a way to tie Jews into blacks with slavery. My, uh, all, all men are created equal. Then that had real meaning. And, um, uh, that's why he refuses to buy into know nothing movement because he feels it cuts against the anti Catholicism, cuts against his views on blacks. And in the 19th century, in this period, much more than we realized, um, the persecution of blacks in America and the persecution of Jews in Europe are linked in the public mind. These are two persecuted peoples. Mm. And um, I, I... Now you see how he's saying that it's linked in the public's mind. It's not linked. It's not linked in nobody's mind. 
General Grant just kicked the Jews out. Why he fighting? Why he fighting for so-called slavery? So how is it linked? You see what I'm saying? No one is linking this together. But these people, let's start again. Look at this. See how they saying it's linked? Against his views on blacks. And in the 19th century, in this period, much more than we realize, um, the persecution of blacks in America and the persecution of Jews in Europe are linked in the public mind. These are two persecuted peoples. Mm. And um, I, I was surprised, really, at how much evidence I found. So, for example, here in Washington, um, you had twice uh, plays that Lincoln goes to on Jewish themes. One uh, with the title Gambia is actually written by an African-American um, playwright, si uh, Hold up, my bad. Let's go back real quick. Oh. Is that Abraham Lincoln's life spanned uh, a very important period in American Jewish history because when he was born in 1809, there were, I think you said, 3,000 Jews in America. By the time of his death, there were 150,000. So um, set us the context. Who were those Jews in America? Where were they from? Where were they living? So uh, there is a significant migration of Jews from Central Europe, the countries that are today uh, uh, Germany and Poland uh, uh, and so on, that, that, be, that come to the United States in the 19th century. Some of them, the ones most likely to support Abraham Lincoln, uh, were 48ers. They had supported liberal revolutions in Central Europe in 1848. Uh, then they had fled. Yes, yeah, not a particularly healthy thing to be doing. No, uh, and uh, they paid for it by uh, having to leave and come to to America. All right, let's stop right quick. We go, we go. It's a silly day. We just having fun. We just going to learn everything we can learn. Shout out to everybody that's rocking with me. So he just said that in 1848, it was a whole bunch of revolutions going on in Europe. And the people that fled those revolutions came to America. That's what bro just said. I think that's what he just said, right? So let's find out who these people are. Eighteen forty-eight is. See, I already know who these people are. Eighteen forty-eight ers, right here. We think about the forty-niners, but this is how they get the high people. That's how they hide people, the high revolutions. You know what I'm saying? Forty-eight ers, Europeans who participated and supported the revolutions. of 1848 that swept Europe. What? That swept Europe. The German Confederation. Right? So this is what this is what he this is what is coming to America. People on a revolutionary footing. They playing subterfuge. They playing games. You know, they, they sweeping through Europe. This is what they said. They said that this joint swept through Europe. You see what I'm saying? And he just said it went from 3,000 to 150,000 in 30 years. So we don't know what he know. Well, and uh, they paid for it by uh, having to leave and come to America. And but see, did they come here to start another revolution? Did they come here to bring that same mentality? You know what I'm saying? Like, again, well, there was already wars going on. Is what I'm trying to tell y'all. We got the, the 100-year Gala Wars. We was fight, fighting people over what they was doing in Arkansas. So don't believe the hype that we needed these immigrants from, from, from the wars to come over here and start a revolution. That's what he's trying to make it seem like. 
they left Europe and came here and they added their revolutionary spirit. But we didn't ask for that. And, uh, they continue. Uh, they bring to America those values uh, which had led them to support revolution. See? And those were the people most likely to oppose slavery, to support the Republican Party. Um, but there also are lots of other people who come from Central Europe. Uh, to Again, they want to tell you that, see, this is the thing. They say black people, black people did not support the Republican Party. We didn't vote for Lincoln, my nigga. Lincoln got 39% of the vote. They split the party. They split the party. They did the same thing they did with, with, with um, shit. George Bush, when they had Ross Perot run, they had a third party candidate and they split the vote. They know how to split the vote. So Lincoln didn't win. He had the he had the lowest percentage of a win ever in history. But the vote was so split. We come for reasons of opportunity uh, and um, uh, every uh, uh, community really begins to have a sense that there are now non-Christians living there, meaning that in 1809, most of the Jews live in port cities from Savannah, say, to Newport. Uh, Savannah, Charleston, Philadelphia, New York, Newport, and so on. Baltimore. Baltimore. Um, by um, by, by uh, 1850, Jews have spread all the way across the country, literally to California with the gold rush, and um, they have filled in in lots of places. And uh, of course, Abraham Lincoln has met them long before he comes to Washington because you did. You had clothing stores in. What a Illinois. surprise! Jews yep. running clothing stores. Exactly. Yeah, right. Astonishing. I know. And, Just, uh, and, I told you to learn a lot of new things tonight, right? <laughs> and. Um, uh, but you didn't know that uh, it's the ancestor of uh, the folks who began Sears Roebuck. Sears and Roebuck, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, one of the things you mentioned, though, uh, once he, once, uh, uh, But, you know, it's funny. They always say, yeah, Sears and Roebuck is responsible for slavery. It wasn't even around. No, Sears and Roebuck, they got all the money from slavery. Y'all got to sue Sears. Boy, it's some Jewish new booty stuff. Lincoln gets to Illinois in Springfield. There are Jewish merchants uh, like uh, uh, that, the Hammerslogs. But uh, uh, in Kentucky, in his youth, you posit that he probably never did meet a Jew during his childhood. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no evidence of Jews in those areas. And they were so poor. It's unlikely a Jewish peddler would have bothered to uh, <laughs> and go uh, in uh, in that area. So the Jews Abraham Lincoln knows in those days are the Jews in the Bible. Um, but in the second half of his life, uh, he interacts with numbers of Jews, and he has Jewish friends, which I think is significant. Uh, you have Jewish friends, it gives you a sense that uh, uh, these are folks like anybody else. Right, on a more personal basis. And yep. you... I got Jewish friends. They folks like everybody else. You got them right. I'll be telling y'all, the motherfuckers, don't get it confused. They are cool, and they will trick you. <laughs> they my friends, but I got nigga friends that'll trick you. They'll finesse you, too. Don't get it confused. Don't get it confused. They're definitely my friends, but they will trick you. And my job is to make sure that we don't stay tricked. No, sir. You started to talk about Julius uh, uh, Hammerslough. Is that how you pronounce his name? Uh, uh, who uh, ran a clothing store in Springfield. Um, uh, and uh, even his obituary, uh, he was described as a warm friend, uh, as you quote in the book. Um, but... Um, uh, there is that interesting, I sorry I interrupted you, but you were telling the story about how there actually is a connection between this clothing store in Springfield and the Sears and Roebuck um, yeah. Empire. Which, yeah. uh, I mean, and that it, it, these Hammerslaws and they're related to Myers and the bed store is sold. 
uh, to the Rosenwalds, and of course it's Rosenwald, the next generation, uh, that creates Sears Roebuck. Um, so you do see these fascinating connections, uh, but um, what... Uh, and you think that uh, it's probably likely that uh, Abe Lincoln uh, actually bought clothing from likely that Lincoln uh, bought clothing from Hammerslaw. And of course, uh, Hammerslaw does extremely well in the Civil War when he gets uh, his clothing manufacturer by then, and he gets contracts uh, for a lot of the clothes, uniforms Uniform. for lots of troops, which was extremely lucrative. And um, uh, I think that, that Lincoln, there's good evidence that he knew Henry Rice uh, and, and so on. But what's really important <laughs> is his friendship with Abraham Jonas. Hammerslay, after all, is 23 years younger than Lincoln. Everybody take a deep breath. He about to tell you something that you never heard. Take a deep breath. Here we go. About to get conspiracy theory and breathe through your nose, nigga. Breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, nigga. Breathe out through your mouth. Let's go. And uh, Rice is uh, again much younger, but Jonas is 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 somebody whom he really calls of my friend. They spent a lot of time together. They're both lawyers. Uh, they're both politicians. Uh, Jonas, I think, has been unduly neglected. And you know, Jonas himself was a member of the Illinois legislature. Right. Uh, politician. And, you're probably one of the first Jews to serve in a state mm -hmm. legislature anywhere. And, and meant for a lot of people, he was probably the first Jew that they really knew. He was very significant in Quincy, Illinois, where he lived. Uh, most of the people who write about Jonas note the fact that he is Jewish, uh, meaning that Lincoln certainly knew this. Uh, but Jonas was a masterful political tactician, a great speaker, and the two men um, uh, spent time together. And you also write in the book that really Jonas... Um was instrumental in uh, urging and helping Lincoln to run for president. Yes. Tell that uh, story. So um, Jonas really is uh, involved in, in Lincoln's politics really uh, in the 1850s and uh, uh, hosts one of the Lincoln-Douglas debates, uh, which is held in Quincy and... Um, uh, Afterwards, um, uh, when Horace Greeley comes to Quincy and they are talking, uh, Horace Greeley, a newspaper man, and so on, a significant politician, they are talking about who they might run in 1860, mm -hmm. and they go through various names, and the claim is Jonas uh, uh, is the one who argues, what about Abraham Lincoln? And Jonas then constructs a strategy for the Republican Party, uh, which actually becomes a party strategy. We've got to attract outsiders. And fascinatingly, he includes among those outsiders, not just German liberals, but Israelites, um, whom he feels the Republican Party can capture. Uh, whether they did or not, the Republican Party has been trying to capture Israelites for 150 years. But um, yeah. they, uh, whether they did or not is less interesting. Yeah, we didn't have exit polls. Well, yeah, and less interesting so. than the fact that he um, uh, that uh, he, he he writes this and talks about it. So again, this is this is amazing. Jonas is the reason why Abraham Lincoln ran for president. It's some Jewish people that said, who are we going to run? They came together and said, hey, let's run Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln wasn't running for president. He was handpicked. They set up his debates. They brought in the newspaper people before, you know what I'm saying? He was a puppet. 
Abraham Lincoln is a puppet. He didn't do none of that. They try to tell you that, that this was his idea. It wasn't his idea. This is a Jewish emancipation movement. These are crypto Jews. Uh, and there's little doubt that Jonas plays a role. And then at the convention, which is really astonishing, uh, the convention is held in Chicago, in what they call the Wigwam in Chicago in 1860. And actually, lots of people um, uh, in those days would try and pack the hall. And uh, William Seward, who thinks that he has this nomination in the bag has arranged to duplicate a lot of tickets so that his supporters will come in. They will make a tremendous dememonstration. And this is held in Chicago and others. Who knew? Study. Right. Uh, well, uh, they, they never happened before. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a big demonstration for Seward. That will convince everybody Seward is unstoppable. But, of course, word gets out. And Jonas, uh, who, of course, is supporting Lincoln, he says, two can play that game. So uh, he also makes lots of copies of the tickets, and he also packs the hall. And to everybody's surprise, when Lincoln's name is put into nomination, there's as big uh, a racket as uh, when Seward is. And if you read, you can go online and read the protocols of the 1860. Republican convention, and you see the adjectives that attempt to describe these demonstrations, and it's clear uh, that it's Lincoln and Seward, and that means the people in the convention, oh, Seward is not a sure thing. And Lincoln's strategy is, if Seward is not a sure thing, and then these other guys, Bates and others, they didn't get big demonstration. So everyone will abandon their first love, and everybody's second love was Lincoln. So on the third ballot, Lincoln gets nominated. It was a very successful strategy, and that's how Lincoln gets the nomination, and Jonas, his friend, plays a role. You know, it's, it, you, you made a very interesting point when you, when you... So, ladies and gentlemen, I am your humble free skin. <laughs> I hate Prince <laughs> That's history. And I did it under an hour. <laughs> oh, even though they tried to block me. But that was history. <sighs> so yeah, you can take from that whatever you like to take. I think I approve my thesis. I approve I think I approve him because again the thesis is not just two things. It's not just Germans. It's not just Jews. It's not just Israelites. See how they take and, and maneuver it within all of these different spheres. You see? So crypto Judaism, the poor guy with the um, emancipation, he, he didn't even write that. You know what I'm saying? The Jews just gave it to him. Say, here, here, announce this. It's all part of. A hoax. You seen the guy say, "Yeah, we're going to duplicate the ticket." They try to blame the other dude. Yeah, he did it first. How did you know he did it? How y'all know he duplicated tickets? Okay, so why didn't y'all just call him on it and stop it and make it fair? No. But this is election fraud at its finest. I be trying to tell y'all how they do election fraud. So that's election fraud to get him in, right, on the Republican ticket. Like I'm saying, we're not even Republican. He just said that they was trying to get more immigrants to be Republicans. You know what I'm saying? So all of this stuff is a media manipulation. It's a lie. It's a, it's a scheme of the campaign. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I hope y'all, uh, buddy, don't get me upset. <laughs> don't get me upset. Nobody told you today. I love you. Love being in love with you. Peace.